Hey guys and welcome back to my channel. Today I am going to show you how you can frog your work starting from your foundation edge or otherwise known as your cast on edge or your foundation chain edge. Basically the point that you started at in your project. So basically I have been working on this cardigan for a little while now. It's obviously quite a large project as you can see. This being the top of my cardigan and then all the way down here is the bottom. This cardigan is worked from the bottom up. So once I'd gotten to this point, I thought, you know what? I'm not happy with the length of this cardigan. I wanna take some length off the bottom of the cardigan. And I thought to myself, I'm going to have to unpull this entire project. I'm going to have to start all over again just to take a few rows off the bottom of my cardigan. And someone on my Instagram account mentioned that I could just take off a section from the bottom rather than having to frog the whole entire thing. And I was like, you know what? I have heard people do this. Um, or I've heard about people do this, I've seen people do this, but I've never actually done it myself because I was number one, too scared. But number two, it also had just never crossed my mind to take length off the bottom where I had begun my project. So I decided to give it a go. So as you can see, this is the section that I removed from my cardigan. So basically this section was attached to here Whoop. Sorry guys, the lighting's not great. Red is so hard to take photos of and to film. So basically this is the length I decided I wanted to remove from the bottom of my cardigan. And so I'm gonna show you exactly how I did it and how I ended up with a perfectly neat and tidy hem without dropping any stitches or ruining my entire project or having to unpull my entire project just to take a few rows off the bottom. So for demonstration purposes, I've done up a little swatch here just so I can show you guys what I'm talking about on a smaller scale. So as you can see, this was my foundation chain here. This is where my project began and this is my working end. So this is the end that I'm currently working on. Now, for demonstration purposes, let's just say that this swatch is my cardigan and I want to remove some length from the beginning end of my project. So let's just say I want to remove two rows from the bottom of this swatch. I recommend using a smaller hook size than what you have been using to work up your project. This is just going to make your life a lot easier as we need to get in under these stitches and secure them. So for instance, this swatch was worked up with a six millimeter hook. I'm going to go in now with a 4.5 millimeter hook um, to secure these stitches. So I do recommend using a smaller hook size than what you have been using for your work. It's just going to make your life a lot easier. So we can get rid of that hook for now and what we're going to do, I'll try and zoom in for you guys, is we're now going to go in and secure all these stitches. So for instance, say we want to get rid of these two rows, so one row, two rows, we want to get rid of those. We need to go into the third row and secure these stitches because once we cut this section away, you don't want these stitches here to unravel and your whole project to fall apart. So usually I would recommend using the same color yarn as what your project is. This obviously will help the yarn to blend in. You won't even notice that there has been any alterations made, but for demonstration purposes today, I am going to use a contrasting color because I want you guys to be able to see what I am doing. So first of all, I'm just going to start with a slip knot and then I'm going to pop that onto my hook. So now I've got my slip knot on my hook. We are ready to begin. So first of all, you're going to take your work, find that third row that I spoke about before. So we're getting rid of one, two rows. So we want to secure the stitches in the third row. Now, remember we are going through the bottom of the stitches, not the top. So ensure your working end is at the top and the beginning end is facing towards you because we want to be going in the bottom of the stitches to secure them. Okay, now, First of all, I want to mention that if you are using a 
turning chain at the beginning or the end of your row. Let's just find where mine is. So this is mine. So find your turning chain because I cannot stress enough how important it is to ensure that you secure your turning chain. If you don't secure it properly, the whole project is going to unravel and that is what we're trying to avoid. So find that turning tra turning chain and we want to secure it. So find the bottom of that turning chain. So I can see that my the bottom of my turning chain is there. You're now going to take your hook in behind that turning chain. It might be a little bit tricky, but just take your time. Okay, so now that I can see that I've got two loops at the front of my hook, and then if I turn it over, I can see there is one loop on my hook. This indicates that I am going to be securing my turning chain correctly. I cannot stress how important this is. If you don't secure your chain, your turning chain correctly, like I said, your work is going to fall apart, which is precisely what we're trying to avoid. So please ensure that this is what your turning chain looks like when you've got it on your hook. If you don't see it like this, please go back and do it again because I don't want your work to fall apart because you haven't secured your turning chain correctly. Okay, so once you've got it like that on your hook with two loops at the front, one loop at the back, we're just going to secure that with a simple slip stitch. Just like so. Get that end out of the way. Once we've secured our turning chain, we're going to go on to the next stitch, which is this one right here. You'll see that at the bottom of each stitch, there is two loops. Um, per stitch. So we've got one loop there. Let me just focus this. So we've got one, two loops there, which is that stitch, one, two loops there, which is that stitch, and so on and so forth. We want to go in under both of those loops there at the bottom of our stitch. So inserting our hook under both loops and then securing with a slip stitch. Just like that. And now again in the next stitch, going in under both loops at the base of our stitch, slip stitch. Sorry guys, this yarn is squeaky and it's driving me crazy. So I'm sorry if it's driving you crazy as well. Again, into the next stitch, securing with a slip stitch and then we're just going to repeat this all the way to the end of the row. So going in under each stitch, securing with a slip stitch. Okay, so here we are almost at the end of our row. I'm just gonna go in and secure that very last stitch. Just like that. And now that we have secured every stitch all the way along, including our turning chain, we can now cut this yarn. And tie that off. Just like that. And now it's time for the scary part, the cutting. So now that every stitch is secured, 
We know that our work's not going to fall apart, which is what we want. So you can now go in and cut off the length that you want to get rid of. But in saying that, please be careful. We don't want to cut into those stitches that we've just secured because that defeats the whole purpose of having them secured. We want to make sure that we are cutting into the stitches below the ones that we just secured. So if you need to stretch your work out to help you see, that is perfectly fine. But just make sure that you're not cutting into those stitches that we've just secured. Okay, so here it goes. We're going to start cutting. All right, we're almost at the end. Now, please do not continue cutting through your the stitch under your turning chain because we need to change it up a little bit for this for the turning chain um, end because we don't want to be left with a tiny little end that we are unable to sew in or secure we want to make sure that instead of cutting up nice and close to these stitches we want to be cutting down here so let me just get rid of that second last stitch Instead of cutting up here like we have with all of these stitches, we want to be cutting down here. Um, and this is purely because, like I said, you don't want to be left with a tiny little end that you can't sew in, you can't tie off because it's too short. So we want to give ourselves as much length as we possibly can for our turning chain end. So what I'm going to do is cut here as far away from my turning chain as I can. And now we're just gonna go in and pull out all these little bits of yarn. To tidy it up a little bit. And with this section, it may take a little bit of extra time because we're now gonna have to go in and unravel this stitch but it's definitely worth it because otherwise like I said you will be left with the tiniest little end I have made this mistake myself and it's not fun to work with because you can't sew it in you can't tie it off there's really nothing you can do with it so we want to avoid that Okie dokie. All right, so now that we've unraveled that last stitch, you can see that we've now got a nice little end there that we will be able to sew into our work. And that is pretty much all there is to it. This is what you should be left with. Obviously, your yarn will be matching your work. Um, but as I said, I just used a contrasting color so you guys can see what I'm doing. But this is pretty much what you should be left with. As you can see, it is a nice, neat edge. You can then just go in and sew in these ends. And you honestly would not even know that you have made any kind of alterations to your work. I don't know about you guys, but this for me is an absolute game changer. I think I will be using this technique all the time, especially as a designer when you're not really sure what you want the length to be or you're not really sure what color scheme you want to be using and sometimes you make a mistake right at the beginning of your project or you start your stitch pattern in a place that you wish you didn't start it and you just want to take that little section off at the beginning of your work without unraveling your whole entire project. This technique is an absolute game changer. Um, if you did enjoy this video, please don't forget to give me a thumbs up. If you would like to be notified of future videos, please subscribe and make sure you turn on your notifications. If you tried this technique and it worked for you, please comment down below. Otherwise, I will see you all next time and I hope you have a great rest of your day and stay safe, guys. Thanks so much for watching.